Experience passion. Embrace the culture. Nestled in the scenic historic section of Bronzeville, Chicago, the Urban American Gallery is home to suspension, rope artist, and erotic photographer, Solomon Abrams. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Swing Culture Podcast. These conversations are not for the faint of heart. I am your host, Nadine St. Val. My friends call me Queen Nadine. Like, You're listening to the Swing Culture hello. Podcast. Good evening. Featuring Queen Nadine. Good evening. Ooh, Ooh, welcome to um, Swing Culture Podcast. Thank you, thank you for having me. <laughs> okay, so you're a photographer and basically you're artists and you're also a dom and you're in this amazing poly relationship with i believe you told me it was four women right now <laughs> three women you're gonna get me in trouble i'm sorry, <laughs> three women. sorry. i'm happy i didn't say five because i was like did he say five or four <laughs> whoa <laughs> Why can't why the number keep going up? Why can't it go down? No, <laughs> no, three women. Okay, tell tell us tell us tell us about you. Tell us about what you do. I got into photography and shooting erotic uh, content um, when I came home from Iraq. I, um, I created a plus size porn site for BBWs. I did that for a few years and stopped somewhere around. 2010, 2011, and focused uh, solely on just photography from a a erotic standpoint. I didn't want to do commercial stuff. I didn't want to take family photos, even though I did some times to pay bills. Um, So I did, I concentrated on just being better with photography from around 2010 and on. Around 2011, 2012, the end of 2012, in 2011, I um, discovered bondage I got into it mainly just to give myself a creative competitive edge over the other photographers in the city get something different and for people correct something that no one was doing at the time and I started doing that and and I slowly felt that it was I just liked it I, I was trying to find some flash for to say it but I just liked it I liked how it made me feel, it made me feel. okay you know so even though I was shooting porn before, I would shoot porn like it wasn't, I would just be shooting. It, it, I didn't have any feelings towards it, really. Now, not to say that there weren't any times that scenes were so odd. I, I didn't get aroused or get an erection. But overall, for the most part, it wasn't that. It wasn't really a thing. Until I started doing rope, I just feel, realized how aroused I was. The next thing I was having with the, um, with the models in the bottoms, and I just decided to immerse myself in their culture and learn it from a culture standpoint. Um, been doing it ever since. Around 2013, I had already known the woman who became my first submissive, my Eve. Um, her and I connected on a different level. Um, so around 2013, I entered to the um, BDSM lifestyle. Ooh, excuse me, and I've been living that out loud ever since. Um, I've been poly. I've been oh man, I've been I've been living poly for maybe since around 2015, 16 ish. That's when I kind of knew that I was. I had the terminology before then. I knew that I was non-monogamous, you know, but I wasn't. I didn't have the verbiage for poly. I learned a new word yesterday. It's called a, a family table poly. Is that what you guys have? No, we, no, we don't do kitchen table poly. It's um, so I'm closer to what they call like um, my pastors were wrong all the time. Equitarian, where I kind of approach it. My approach, their approach may be different, but my approach is I sort of treat everybody. I don't like saying equally, but kind of by definition, like equally. But I like to treat everyone uniformly. You know, and I don't require them to date each other, and I don't put any restrictions on them. Experience passion, embrace the culture. Are you charging for your and houses? now, a message <laughs> from our sponsor. Hi, this is Queen Nadine of Swing Culture Podcast. When it comes to lifestyle magazines, I look no further than ASN Lifestyle Magazine. 
whenever I log in to ASNLifestyleMagazine.com, I get all the latest news on everything alternative. I find out about the latest events and I get to check out all their sexy photos. Check out ASNLifestyleMagazine.com for your latest, sexiest news. Ooh, baby. We're all adults, so I can't say what you are and not allowed to do, but... You can try. I'm <laughs> you can try. You can try catching a speeding bullet with one hand tied behind your back. Yeah. I just don't suggest it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's <laughs> so, going to work, but you can try. <laughs> right, you can try, you know. You can try, but, you know, I fail. So, I, um, what I just promote is for them to keep me in, you know, Communicate openly with me. Tell me what you're going to do. Not as a demand, but as a, hey, we're adults. Just say what you're going to do. And I try to treat each, each person uniformly. So there's, I, I don't there's, say, there's no like okay? set of rules for them to follow or like a set of rules for you to follow, basically. So yes, no, and maybe. So start off with yes. So of course we have some rules and guidelines that we that we all sat and said, "Hey, these are the rules. These are my rules," and we all exchanged our individual rules, so that it's I, I can't. I don't want to tell someone. I don't want to ask them what they want to do. I'm going to say to them, "Hey, here's what I want to do. Here's the type of person that I am," and I ask them to tell me the type of person that they are and what they're looking for, and I do that with each individual person, and that way, it's if I'm telling you who I am. So this is just how I am, and that's how you are. And then we have, we have, we are empowered to make a decision if that's what we're comfortable living. If that's it, you know. So, for example, I don't put any restrictions on them on if they can or cannot date men or other people. I just say, hey, let me know if you're going to be involved with other people, and then I'll make a determination how you are with them if it's comfortable for me and be mindful <laughs> of the existence. To be mindful of the existence of other people. Like I'm mindful of the existence of other people because I don't want, I don't want, God forbid, inshallah, nothing happens to me. I live a nice long life. I don't want them. If something happens to me and then I'm in the hospital, I'm in a situation where I need them to come together to get me out of a jam. I don't need them angry at each or fighting with each other. It's gonna be I like an them episode of of love and hip hop. <laughs> right. They, they better, they better. It's a Swing Culture Podcast with Queen Nadine. If you're enjoying the show, please subscribe so you never miss another episode. Experience the passion, embrace the culture. It's dope. It's really, really dope that they are into each other and they are, you know, what's a, always a bonus? With each, that's good. But if they don't, I need them to be civil with each other and not not be assholes to each other because the, what happens is in my experience when that happens people try to be like they, they use the person that connects them as a conduit to do asshole silly ass shit and so I don't let's not do that just, hey you know let's not do that All right, everybody's so that's, responsible that's, for the behavior everybody's responsible for the decision right. because as long as you have given you all the information and I'm being honest and I'm being upfront, you can make the most conscious decision for yourself Correct. That's what I believe. Now, is that now? We do we act on those things all the time? No. <laughs> I would like to lie to you and say, "Don't be so dope over here." And it's all love. No. It's, uh, for me being the only man in this in this um, foursome, it is a juggling act, and I have to learn to juggle. I have to learn to um, humble. I humble myself every day, multiple times a day. Apologize when I'm wrong. Um, I try to be a really gracious winner as well as a um, gracious loser. Like, hey, <laughs> don't beat me up. You know what I'm saying? I, I see the error in my ways. I will make the change. Don't beat me up with that. Okay. Would you date someone who's not into BDSM? Would you consider them for your poly? <sighs> no. Really? I tried it. It just doesn't. <laughs> yeah, and here's why. Because I would consider it. However... The times that I have considered it, it um, the person they just have to be open, open to understanding that I am a kingster, and that how I am as a kingster is um, 
that, that that's me. And so I'm not trying to push that on them. But you know, hey, these are I do have these kinks. I do. This is how I rock. So you know, it's long story short. It's been my experience that when they're not comfortable with that, a person who's insecure in themselves, they just aren't secure. They're not comfortable with that that way. And I find a lot of women would say, I would, I would make, I would say something just like, hey, um, can you hand me that thing? I'm not one of your little submissives. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> Experience passion. Embrace the culture. Swinger etiquette tip of the day. Engage both people when meeting a couple. You want to show that you respect both of them. No matter what naughty thing is running through your mind, showing respect now is your way of showing that you can be trusted to respect their rules and boundaries later on in the bedroom. If you are at a swingers only event, you can greet with a cozy hug and a light kiss. In more vanilla settings, you probably want to stick to a handshake. I'm not one of your little submissive. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> nothing to do with anything. You know? Or uh, Yeah, it's taking it too far, I think. <laughs> yeah. You know, I speak. Um, I'm a veteran. I'm a, I'm a retired uh, sergeant first class. You know, I'm in infantry. All these things. And so a lot of times I speak very directly. And I speak with a direct. And it's not a command that they, you run in the kitchen, bring me a glass of water. Oh, you should act like, hey, you know, getting upset. Like, I'm giving them a direct and I'm making them. I'm like, no, not that. Mm. You're going in there, right? I so can't I see myself behaving water. like that no matter what the situation is. It just comes right. off and, rude. So, yeah. yeah. So, and so, I mean, I'm not saying that it, it doesn't come off a way that in that way may be rude. No, I'm not, I'm not even talking about you. I'm talking about the women response. I may have my head around their neck and now they're like, oh, you're not going to show me. Oh man, I was not gonna kill you, you know. So I'm sorry. It, it's that I, I just found it just to be like, or I smack them on the butt, and they they have like the most craziest face. Like, oh, oh, you think you gonna start beating me? Listen, you got the wrong one. You got the wrong. Right, it's not gonna right. It's not, <laughs> not gonna, gonna work. It's not, the, it's not what right. It's not gonna be that. Mm-mm, I couldn't. I couldn't. I don't, I, you have an interesting life. I can honestly say that you've had some interesting experiences. I can't imagine behaving that way. Me personally, I cannot yeah. imagine me behaving that way under no circumstances. It, it definitely happens. Oh, that's wild. I think everybody I know, if you smack them on the ass, they would probably like stick it out a little bit more and be like, do it again. <laughs> Thank you. I have good friends. I'm so happy. Oh, God. To those of you who are just tuning in, this is Swing Culture Podcast, and we are talking to Sir Dom Solomon. And he, you are just full of information. Thank you so much. Oh, my goodness. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I had a feeling this was going to be a good interview just because you just come off just very honest and very genuine. And you seem to be a very, I don't know you personally, but you come off very intelligent and you're very well spoken. Well, thank you. I read a book or two. <laughs> I read a book or two. Took a few lessons. I tell my kids all the time I can't read. I'm like, you know, we can't um. read. <laughs> I like to fuck with them. I like I do. It, it brings me joy. Um, so you get you tell us where we can find your work, and you're def, you're not a swinger, but you are into polygamy. So I'm gonna ask you for someone who's looking to get into being a dom um, in Chicago. Where can they go and get some information? Who would you suggest they talk to? How would you suggest they go about it? Um, I would suggest them to start with the people they know. If you know someone in the King community, reach out to them and start talking to them. If they don't know anyone, I would start um, get on get on Fat Life and just kind of um, there is. There's a, um, a the, the local dungeon, um, gallery domain, Galleria domain two or GD two. They have you can get a temporary membership and then just kind of come out and um, and go from there. 
they can reach out to, I'm not going to say reach out to me. You see, I'm trying to skirt around it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I know as you haven't but, uh, answered yourself yet. <laughs> right. But um, they can reach out to me and then I, I, I can steer in the right direction. I'm not taking on people asking me to be their mentor and I'm not necessarily doing that. That's a huge, that's a huge thing and it means I'm not mentoring people. I'm, I'm, I don't have a time for Do you for think it. it's necessary but, to have a mentor and when becoming a dog? I think it's, I, Yes, it's, I think it's, I think I think a person to have a mentor like they was entering the swing community because someone has to help guide you through this shit. No way, help you know, guide me through shit. <laughs> that don't mean you shouldn't help the next person. Like I do, I, I give a lot of people information all the time, but no one guided me through nothing through my BDSM kink and, and learn, finding about the, the, um, the swinger community. No one guided me. I went in blindly and I jumped in the deep end and I was like, I'm going to swim with the big boy. Right. right. And next thing you know, she might pull you out on the beach and give you CPR. <laughs> and like, what the fuck happened? Yo, you was wilding out. You know? And so, but yeah, <laughs> they, can re- they can reach out to me and I can point to some resources. But it, it's a read books, go online and just, before you decide you're going to be someone's dom or someone submissive or their master, their slave, Learn who the fuck you are as a person. Learn learn what you like and what you don't like. Take your time. Take your... And that goes for even swinging. Before you go to these events and you try to fuck everybody or get fucked by everybody and do all the wild and that shit you want to do, take your time and get to find out who you are. Mm. Find out what you like and what you don't like. So as a dom, find out what you like, not what you think you like, but what you 100% sure like. Do you want a person waiting on you hand and foot? Yes. Do you know how to facilitate a person working work you hand and foot? Because there are some, you have to be able to facilitate that, in my opinion. Are you a fair person? Do you know how to communicate your wants and needs? Are you, if, if, it's, if it's your way or the highway, do you know how to communicate that? Do you know how to say, are you comfortable with the things that you think you are? Because sometimes you start doing some shit and you realize, I don't like it. Like, I don't like brat. I can, I can deal with some bratty behavior every now and then, but I don't like brat. And I don't like brat because there is a um, belief amongst brats. They like to push their doms, their daddy doms, but... I like to, I hate to have my buttons pushed. It makes me feel like I'm being manipulated. Mm. And I don't find any joy in that. So I need to, I express that to people. I express that to women and say, listen, I don't like to be manipulated. And there are times where I will be and think I'm being manipulated and I react overboard. Like, you know, like, I think, you you know, it won't be the best way, you know, like, like, yo, who the fuck you think you you kicking me or something? <laughs> no, I'm not gonna do that. And that's not the case. You know, like, mm-mm. So, first of all, before you decide you want to be a dominant or a master, find out what that means for you. Mm. Because any person can take an implement and start spanking somebody and tell them what to do. It doesn't make you a dominant, you know. And that doesn't make you a leader. It doesn't. It makes you just in charge, you know. It's if you go to the stop, if you go to the stop sign at the corner, the corner at the corner, the stop sign is in charge. It doesn't lead you anywhere. It just gives you, tell you to stop doing something, Give you stop direction. moving, and you stop. Right. A leader gives you direction, molds you, and helps you out. And they have their shortcomings, and they, they, their shortcomings are overshadowed are in, um, by your pluses, and vice versa. And it's okay, but you have to learn these things on your own. You have to learn. You have to come into it with your own integrity as a man or a woman, as a um, dominant, and have, and have some fucking integrity, and then implement that integrity in the, your charges. And, and in that way, as you grow into this lifestyle and learn more, you'll be able to say, you know, go from saying, these are my limits, but you know what, I'm gonna learn that. You know what, I'm, I'm gonna try this. You know what, I'm gonna not, I don't wanna do that. That shit don't do nothing for me. And you can, and it makes you just a better per- person and the dom and all that shit. So that's what I, before you do anything, before you start buying floggers and paddles and, and, and shit, you 
you know, all that shit. Learn who the fuck you are, you know. Be comfortable with who you are. Let's start off with that. And so for me, for example, when I first entered when I first entered the lifestyle, I was not doing any impact play. I was outside of spanking some asses, I wasn't I was not hitting women. Not hitting women. My first submissive helped me, she nurtured me and cultivated me me through that. We sat and had some long talks. She was like, No, you can't slap me in the face. And we you know, I don't like that. What that I don't like that shit. I do not like I don't right. like to be hit in the face. You can smack me in my ass. I don't mind being choked. You can pinch my nipples. All that you right. can, you, can so, you smack me in my face, we might fight. Right. So, <laughs> right. And then so I have to you know, you have to learn those spaces. Now I can so along that I wasn't I would not to her face call a woman a bitch. And what I saying with the guys, man, these bitches in that man, and these bitches. Man, <laughs> sex bitch. You know, yes, I was saying that. But through through having good submissive women in my life who helped me and helped guys that and said, No, I like I like when you call me a bitch and a slut and this. It makes me feel this way. Mm. You know. We we got a good understanding. And so I had to grow into that. But I wasn't doing it, but, but it took, yeah. But I had to learn who I was at first. And it was, it was just as okay if I wouldn't have um, grew into that. Because there are still some things I just don't, you know, I don't um, do. And so it's like, and that's okay. You know, I'm not hyped for every woman who wants to cook for me to cook a meal for me. Nope. I'm cool on that. <laughs> you don't have to cook for me. No, I, it, it'll be my service. You will be. Nope. I don't need that. <laughs> I can cook for myself, and I have good women in my life who will cook for me or will not cook for me, or who who can order a mean fucking meal. And that I let that be their <laughs> contribution. Yeah, for real. I'm, yeah, I, not every woman has to. If you don't have to know how to cook, cool. It's okay. You Do you know food. how to order? <laughs> right. Do you know how to order some food? You know what I'm saying, man? Woman. Can you warm up some the shit I cook? You don't, you don't, shit. You don't have to learn how to you can make one dish. Oh, you can you can pour a mean bowl of cereal. <laughs> you seem very easy to please. Get your ass now for a daddy a bowl of frosty flakes on the milk. Extra cold like milk. <laughs> right. Frosty, bitch. Get make that shit frosty for and do the pimp do the pimp stuff. Make that shit frosty for daddy, bitch. Get your sexy ass. Your yeah. milk pouring ass, god damn it. Yeah, yeah. Ha <laughs> ha Yo, sexy ass. Alright. Do what you do. I don't need you to well, that's not waste food if you don't know how to cook. Oh, you oh, you know how to order who would eat that? You know who would you, you who would eat that food for me? My dick hard as hell. Who would eat that shit? Grub hub. Huh? You want to get this grub hub dick tonight? Oh, God. I'm going to grub I'm going to I'm going to yeah, fuck the shit out you with that grub hub you just made. I'm not going to. I can't. Go for me to eat. It doesn't matter if she cooked or not. No, fuck all that. As long as you got food you in your belly and yeah. your dick is hard. Yeah. <laughs> I love yeah. it. You, you go to the grocery store, yeah, all right, we going to, all this stuff will work. We going to work it out. Listen, if you end up with a few new stalkers after this interview, it's your own fault. I want you to understand that. <laughs> That's you are making it cool. easy for people to feed you. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, hey, I'm not. I'm, um, I don't have a lot of demands. <laughs> I don't have a lot of like the shit I like. I, trust me. You, I introduce you to my three, and they will tell you it sounds easy, but it ain't that easy. I'm, <laughs> I don't have a lot of moving parts, but it ain't. Shit. It's like I got curse like shit. What, what new projects can we expect from you? Anything new from you? Um, I was currently sure. Uh, so right now I just got through shooting some amazing work with the um with the sister. She's the um oh man, she's a sensual sensei and she has an amazing name that I cannot pronounce. Um she is on Instagram at Taste of Hey um Taste of Honey with two E's, I believe. Okay. Um, and we shot something tonight that was amazing. It was kind of a, um, it wasn't kind of, it was a kind of like a Afro-Asian fusion deal we did. Okay. Uh, some shibari with some tribal stuff. That was, you know, was dope. We're doing, I'm doing that. I'm trying to bring, so for my OnlyFans, 
outside of me just taking pictures of my dick. I am definitely trying to do, I'm doing, trying to bring back more sensual things and um, this content that's sensual and sexy and those things. So we, I'm, so that's what I'm shooting now. I just did a shoot with a BBW model from Arizona, and that is yeah, that's what I got going on. And some models of myself are playing phone phone tag and the email tag. And yeah, that's what I have going on now. Um, just trying to just create some dope flash shit. Just um, give us some yeah. some sexy for the quarantine, right? Some sexy, and to make you want to stay quarantine, like oh, you know, like that. Uh, what else? I am, of course, I'm still teaching, and I'm doing. I, I do sessions. I do. Um, private sessions with people if you I'm going to move into doing private like um, Zoom or FaceTime sessions where if you if you have a kink that you want some kind of coaching on I can set your camera up set my camera up cash at me cash at me and then Hi guys, this is the Queen Day and Day. To listen to more episodes like this, feel free to Google Swing Culture Podcast.